This video is sponsored by Magellan TV. Welcome back to Launchpad. I'm Christian Reddy, your friendly neighborhood astronomer. And astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope have found an exoplanet that seems to behave like the long sought Planet 9 that we've been searching for here in our solar system. So this would be the first discovery of an exoplanet 9. Now to quickly recap, Planet 9 is a planet that's thought to exist in the distant outer solar system. It was proposed as a way of explaining the orbits of distant solar system objects like Sedna, the Goblin, and many others. All of these objects are on detached orbits from the rest of the solar system. And that means that they don't feel any gravitational disturbance from the rest of the planets. They're all aligned in roughly the same direction and seem to be in the same inclined plane with respect to the rest of the planets. Astronomers realize that a planet with a mass between 5 and 10 times that of Earth orbiting in the opposite direction would have shepherded these objects into their present day orbit. This new object was dubbed Planet 9 and astronomers have been searching for it ever since. Obviously they haven't found it yet. But then again, that's not entirely surprising because Planet 9 would have to have an average distance of between 300 to 500 astronomical units from the Sun. And Pluto orbits the Sun from 40 AU away, so we're talking about 10 times the distance from the Sun to Pluto. So that would make for a very faint target in a fairly big sky. So astronomers use models to predict Planet 9's expected orbit and therefore determine where in the sky to search. Well, while the idea of a mini Neptune lurking in the distant outer reaches of the solar system has captured everyone's imagination, it's also been met with a healthy dose of skepticism. And that's partly because even though we've found more than 4,000 exoplanets to date, we've yet to see anything that behaves the way Planet 9 is thought to. So this new finding of an exoplanet 9 is interesting because it shows that such planets are possible. And in a way, it may indirectly help astronomers to find Planet 9 here in the solar system. So we'll talk about this new exoplanet and its implications in a moment. But first, I'd like to thank Magellan TV, who are very kindly sponsoring today's video. I've really been enjoying my subscription to Magellan TV, and I hope you have as well. And if you'd like to give the gift of knowledge this holiday season, I'm excited to announce that Magellan is now offering a buy one, get one free offer on gift cards. Even better, purchasing a gift card will also give you an additional month of Magellan for free, even if you're already a member. So now is the best time to try out Magellan TV and share it with not one, but two of your favorite curious people. And while you're there, check out Planet Hunters, the search for Earth's twin. It's a great documentary about the search for a planet just like ours, with the right size, the right orbit around its sun, with the right temperatures that are neither too hot nor too cold to support life. To enjoy this documentary, make sure to take advantage of this special offer by visiting the link in the description of this video. HD 109906 is a binary star system about 103 parsecs or 336 light years from the Sun. It's part of a larger association of stars between the constellations Centaurus and Crux. The system consists of two stars of spectral type F, which makes each of them a little bit more massive and hotter than the Sun. They're very close together and orbit each other once every 49 days. It's also very young at just 15 million years. In fact, it's so young it still has a large protoplanetary disk surrounding it. It's about 800 astronomical units across, so it's much larger than our Kuiper belt. The disk appears to have a small clearing near its center that extends out to about 50 AU from the star. Now for reference, Pluto orbits the Sun about 40 AU, so it's likely a nascent planetary system clearing out the inner disk. But the only way to reveal the outer disk is by blocking out the light from the star as shown here in an earlier Hubble Space Telescope image. This technique also reveals a planet about 737 AU from the central binary star. The planet goes by the license plate of HD 106906b. 
The planet doesn't appear to be in the same plane of the disk, although it isn't clear if this is because the planet is on an inclined orbit around the disk, or if it was perhaps an optical illusion caused by the planet being in the foreground or something. But the disk is asymmetric. The eastern side is relatively thick and extends out to about 370 AU, while the western side is thinner but longer, extending out to about 550 AU. If the planet is on a highly inclined orbit, it's likely responsible for the disk's appearance because it would then have disrupted the orbits of objects in the disk from circular and dragged them out into more elongated orbits. But to confirm this hypothesis, the planet's orbit would need to be mapped out. However, at more than 700 AU from its host star, it would have something like a 10,000 year orbit, and that's way too long to wait because we're going to miss out in the expanse. Fortunately, we don't have to wait quite that long. A team of astronomers used archival data taken by Hubble to make precise measurements of the planet's motion over a 14 year period. From those measurements, they were able to come up with a range of possible orbits that fit the observations. They found that the allowed orbits would have to be fairly elongated or eccentric, and those orbits would also have to be inclined anywhere from 35 to 68 degrees above the plane of the disk. The models predict the planet's periastron, or its closest approach to the star, to be no closer than 190 AU. The small clearing at the center of the disk extends out to about 50 AU, so even at 190 AU close approach, the planet's orbit would still be detached from any planet circling the star. Overall, that's pretty much like the kind of orbit predicted for Planet 9. But Planet 9 is thought to be between 5 and 10 times the mass of Earth. HD 106906b, on the other hand, is thought to be somewhere around 11 times the mass of Jupiter. That's nearly 3,500 Earth masses. So how does something that heavy end up so far away from its parent star? Well, we think Planet Nine got to its present-day orbit because it formed in the same part of the solar system as the other giant planets and was later kicked out by Jupiter. HD 106906b might have formed even closer to its star, about 3 AU or so. At that time, the inner disk would have been churned up by the shifting gravitational pulls of the two stars as they orbited each other, and this would have created a kind of chaos zone of turbulent gas and dust. As the planet orbited in the disk, drag caused it to spiral inward to the chaos zone. With a combined mass of nearly three times the Sun, the binary stars could have easily kicked the planet into an unstable, eccentric orbit out of the plane of the disk. With each close approach, the planet picked up more and more orbital energy and might have gotten thrown out of the system entirely had it not been for a passing star. If the star had gotten close enough, it would have raised the planet's periastron and detached it from the inner disk. That would have stabilized its orbit and kept the planet far enough away to feel any significant perturbations from the binary star. In order for this to work, the passing star would have had to have gotten relatively close, on the order of a tenth of a parsec, but probably even closer, perhaps as close as 0.05 parsec. Now that's about 10,300 astronomical units, and that would just be close enough to fully stabilize the planet's orbit. As luck would have it, the team identified two possible interlopers. HIP 597.15 and HIP 597.21 are about 11 parsecs from HD 106.906. Their relative velocity suggests an encounter with the binary system would have occurred about 2 to 3 million years ago. The stars certainly came to within a parsec of each other, though it's not clear if they came to within the 0.05 parsec needed to stabilize the planet's orbit. Alternatively, it's possible the planet didn't form with HD 106906 at all, but was captured by the binary after being kicked out of another system. The way to tell would be to take the planet's spectrum and measure its radial velocity. And that would tell us whether or not it was moving away from us and rotating in the same direction as the disk, or if it was moving toward us and rotating opposite 
the disk's rotation. That would put it in a retrograde orbit, and that would certainly imply it was captured from another system. On the other hand, if it's rotating with the disk, then it's certainly formed within the system and was kicked into its present day orbit. Now those radio velocity measurements haven't been done yet, but so far all of the rest of the evidence thus far favors the prograde formed with the disk and got kicked into its present orbit hypothesis. So will this planet help us to find planet nine in our solar system? Of course not, at least not directly. But this does show that a planet can get onto a Planet Nine-like orbit very early in its system's evolution. It's also possible that a more precise measurement of HD 106-906b's orbit will help to validate and refine the models being used to estimate Planet Nine's location in the sky. It would be pretty funny if an exoplanet Nine played a role, however indirectly, in helping us to find Planet Nine here in our solar system. Now, I made some videos about the Planet Nine hypothesis and how astronomers are searching for it, so I'll see you over there when we're done here. As always, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for helping to keep Launchpad Astronomy going, and I'd like to welcome Danny Az, Joseph Fulmer, and Jose Rossatelli Neto as my newest patrons. I'd also like to thank Anna for her intergalactic level support, and Michael Dowling, Stephen J. Morgan, and Morrison Wilde for their cosmological level support. If you'd like to support Launchpad for the price of a cup of coffee every month, well, please head on over to my Patreon page. And if you'd like to join me on this journey through this incredible universe of ours, please make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until next time, stay home, stay healthy, and stay curious, my friends.